should professional tournament anglers now look at the National Professional Fishing League as their tournament schedule? That's what we're going to talk about right now. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this. If you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, click that subscribe and like button and become part of the team and family. The 2023 season physically just ended and in the week, week and a half that it's been there, two weeks, the amount of changes that have happened and news that have has come out has been absolutely unbelievable. It's another one of those off seasons where you kind of got to scratch your head on what's going on in for professional bass fishing. Should anglers who are now going to get either cut from the BPT or that are making our, our fishing the opens should they now go fish the national professional fishing league or the league to start off i think there's a lot of things that the league can do better but there's a couple people in the league that are very trustworthy and honest and are just good people i mean while they probably don't like some of the criticism i've had in the past brad and al and a couple other people are just seriously good people i'll be i'll be truthful brad is one of the most honest trustworthy people i've ever talked to he doesn't doesn't give you any bullshit. He tells you exactly what he's thinking and how. And I'm going to do, or I try to do that same thing. People might not like my constructive criticism. I understand that. I get it too. But with constructive criticism, it can only make you better. And there's a lot of things the league can do better. What? They need to brand their anglers better. They need to figure out the payouts a lot better. They need to figure out where they're going in 2024 better. They need to do their website better because while I do this on Wednesday, Sunday night, it didn't have the Angler of the Year stats correct. And it's a digital, this is a digital world. Doing that takes seconds. They only had up to stage five, which was just mind boggling to me. There's many, many things that they can do better, but with the people that are getting, going to be kicked out of the BPT or are frustrated with the opens or just want to go against go against a field that might be a little softer at this point in time than the others the league is really a viable option for a lot of tournament anglers now i'm not throwing shade at by saying that the the field's a little bit softer but let's be real let's keep it real while it's probably the best group of anglers they've ever had it isn't the elites it isn't the bfls it isn't the imitationals it isn't the bpts it isn't the opens it isn't even the toyota series if we had to look at where NPFL kind of stands, they're probably sixth or seventh in the group. And I, again, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm not trying to cause a riff. It's just being honest. There's some anglers that join NPFL because they realize the it's a softer group of anglers and they can win money. Just take Patrick Walters. And I'm not, I haven't even talked to Patrick. Patrick's won three tournaments in two years. He would have finished first in Angler of the Year, but he had to miss a tournament. He still finished with over $230,000 that he won in five tournaments. That is unbelievable. And Patrick is a really exceptional angler, but look at John Cox and Quentin Capo. Some of these guys just get on the league and they just dominate. But I don't know if that's going to happen from here on out. I know that there's probably, or what I'm hearing, there's probably 200 new anglers trying to join the league for 2024 and 2025. And I know three big name guys that are in. I mean big name. Well, two of them are one of them's a huge name, one of them just has a big attitude, and the other one is just a fantastic angler. But they're all studs that are probably joining the league next year. And the league has been one of these roller coasters. And don't take any offense to this, because I'm only talking to one person. You ought to be thanking Boy Duckett right now, because if he doesn't make these changes, I don't know if the league would succeed. These changes have amplified anglers wanting to go to the league, and that's really positive for NPFL. Now, I think that their schedule is, I don't think their schedule is good. I think going to Logan Martin in January, at the end of January, the beginning of February, is not the right time, only because I think the weather is going to be bad. And then their second tournament, which is at Lake Hartwell, I think having the gap between January or February 3rd and May 12th is just too long of a gap. There's something to be said about fishing and the momentum you get in fishing. And while I respect where they're going and appreciate that they actually take into account where the BPT and the and the invitationals and the opens and the elites are going, so they're not on top of those those tournaments and tournament dates, I think that they need to just make it where the best place they can go and catch the most fish. And I don't think Hartwell is going to be the best in May, but I think it'll be good, but you know, again, it's post-spawn, really, really post-spawn. They go to Pickwick on their third stop, which is always a good place. 
in July. In August, they go to Saginaw Bay, which is going to be a smallmouth fishery, kind of where what happened at uh, the BPT this year. And then last, they go to the St. Johns River, and they're in DeLand and not Palatka. And I would be honest, I think that one's the worst of the of all of them. Uh, I think that's going to be a really different type of fishing, and I think John Cox and his buddy are going to dominate that one. That's a that's a guaranteed win almost for Cox and his buddy, Keith Carson. I mean, those two guys fish out there nonstop. Those lakes in Monroe, and I think, to be honest, as someone who's in Florida, there's so many no-wake zones from where they're going and launching out of. It's a nightmare for anglers. It's It stinks. If you're going to put all five out, put the sixth one out too. Don't just leave us hanging and, and tell us later. I think if you're going to do it, do it 100%. But that's not that's neither here nor there. That's just my opinion on where they're going this year. I think the MPFL is a great option for a lot of good anglers. And I think it's going to be unbelievably competitive in 2024 and also in 2025. I think you're going to see a lot of anglers go in there and just win some money. It's a great place to win some extra money. And even though I think they need to change the breakdown of how anglers are paid, because I think winning 100000 and then second place being 15000 I think there needs to be a broader range in there, or pay more anglers or do something, then being enticed by winning that hundred grand is why NPFL is going to be successful in 2024 and hopefully on into the future. Because quite honestly, they've been such a roller coaster. I think the league has been in a coma for three years. They've had a decline every year of anglers participating. This year, at the end, there was only 73. Don't see that in 2024. They've been in a COBA, and luckily, Boy Duckett's brought out the DFib and shocked them. Guess what? They're up and around, kicking, and going to be successful in 2024, and hopefully on. Like I said, I think they need to make some drastic changes on how the anglers can brand themselves using their stuff, because when you look at statistics of Major League Fishing and Bassmaster and the league, there's a huge discrepancy. When you look at Bassmaster averages 375,000 uniques a month, and Major League Fishing is probably around that 265,000, and then the league is 4,500. People need to know more about the league, know more about the anglers, and start caring about the anglers, and that's what they need to do. The marketing needs to be changed. I know at first the marketing was, let's get the best or the biggest name guys to talk about it. Unfortunately, they do a great job, but they don't help that much. And again, I'm not trying to throw shade or give them any grief. I'm just trying to give them some constructive criticism and then, but also say, I think we're going to see a big jump in the MPFL next year and hopefully in the future. But what do you think? Do you think if you were a professional angler and you knew you were going to get kicked out of the BPT, where would you go? Would you try to requalify for the Opens? or requalify for the elites, would you fish the Opens? Would you fish the Invitationals? Would you fish the Toyota Series, which is probably the best series there is right now, or payouts and other stuff? Or do you go to NPFL and try to get in there and win some money? What would you do? If you're a tournament fisherman, I want to hear what you would do. Comment below. I should say, in the last three or four, five, six days, I've had more anglers call me and talk to me or ask my opinion on NPFL than I would have imagined, especially anglers I don't know. I don't know how they got my phone number, but they got it. And I've told them what I thought, and that's why I made this video. I think NPFL could be successful. Could be. Like I said, they've got to make some drastic changes. They might not like to hear that, and I'm not trying to be mean, but they got to make some drastic changes. They've got to do things differently, because if they don't, they're not going to succeed. And I don't want to see them not succeed because, like I said, there's a few guys on, on the team that are just unbelievable. There's a few guys that suck. And you know who I'm talking to. But there's a bunch that are good guys. So we'll see. Well, comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.